Good morning. You know, I like to think of myself as a fairly solid guy. And yet, we're all solid folks. So, please, give yourself a couple of wraps. See what I mean. Thank you. But the truth is, if I took my lawn moisture meter and poked it into you or me, we would find that water makes up over 75% of all of us. Water has a long list of amazing characteristics, but let's cut to the chase. Without it, there simply would be no life. White Bear Lake is the canary in the coal mine for a more pervasive problem than just its water level. The good news is its high visibility has helped raise awareness of the issue. A few short years ago, most people didn't know the difference between groundwater and water on the ground. Today, conversations around groundwater are taking place in the media, in the schools, and in the workplace around, you guessed it, the water cooler. So two points. First, in my short lifetime, our water model has gone from 30% pumping and 70% surface water to exactly the opposite. Second, pumping from an aquifer faster than its natural rate of recharge, by definition, is unsustainable. So how wisely are we using this life-giving resource? One definition of waste is that it takes a ton of resources to do a minuscule task. I would like to share with you an example of just that. Toilets are the biggest indoor water user, and prior to 1984, they used five or seven gallons per flush. In 1984, that reduced to three and a half, and in 1992, we got to the current federal standard of 1.6 gallons per flush. The latest entrant into the world of toilets is the efficient dual flush, which uses 1.6 for solids and one gallon for liquids. The bladder and bowel foundation tells us that we urinate, or we could use the technical term pee, six or seven times a day on average, six ounces per time. <laughs> the vast majority of the 10,500 households that make up Montanidae, Birchwood, and White Bear Lake were built before 1984, which means unless they've done a remodel that included upgrading their toilets, the three and a half galloners are using 75 units of clean water to remove one unit of pee. The five gallons are using 107, and the seven gallon flushers are using 149 units of clean water to remove one unit of pee. All of this to remove this. Let's be crystal clear about this. Water has been in aquifers for decades, centuries, even thousands of years. Cities spend millions to drill wells. We, pump, we pay to pump it, we treat it, we use it, we pay for the sewer, we treat it again, and then we send it down the river to New Orleans? Really? We are literally flushing our water well down the toilet. The only possible explanation for this behavior is that we attach no value to water. <coughs> Excuse me, I have a dry throat. <laughs> what? <laughs> Using my canned water, the same level of efficiency we use water at home. Okay, what next? First of all, um, raise your hands if you can tell me how many gallons you use every time you flush your toilet at home. 
Well, that's a place to start, folks. Um, so tell me this. When you need information today, is this where you look? Encyclopedia? <laughs> or do you use something that looks a little bit more like this? Thousands upon thousands of households in our three communities are using water today the same way that they used it when this was our information source and when we were watching fat screen TVs <laughs> with rabbit ears. It's time to apply 21st century thinking and technology to our water use. Okay, so the good news is everybody wants to see a healthy White Bear Lake. And this presents us with a unique opportunity to think globally and act locally. Because nothing's more local than our lawns, our kitchens, and our toilets. I am thrilled to announce that the three communities, along with both school systems, MAGI and H2O for Life, have come together to create Race to Reduce, which challenges us to rethink how we use water and how we value water. Race to Reduce points us towards smart water use without being burdensome or inconvenient, because let's face it, most of us are driven by convenience and cost. So what does it cost to turn off the faucet while you're shaving or brushing your teeth? Zero dollars and zero cents. How about that 400, how about that 400 gallon per hour monster we call watering the lawn? What would it cost if we only watered it when it truly needed it and at the time of day when it was most effective? Zero dollars and zero cents. Excuse me. What's that? The less water you use, the more money you save? Got it. Sorry, I understated it. Those behaviors actually cost less than zero dollars and zero cents. So here's what we need to have happen. First of all, every one of us needs to look in the mirror and be honest with ourselves about how we use water. Second, uh, second is we need to understand that collectively we really can make a significant positive impact on the level of White Bear Lake and on the underlying aquifer. If half of the households in these three communities upgraded to a dual flush toilet, installed a save the lake shower head and a couple of faucet aerators and used a moisture meter, lawn moisture meter, we would save 200 million gallons a year from being pumped from the aquifer. That translates to one foot of water level over the entire surface of White Bear Lake every four to five years. Imagine if that caught on to all the communities that pump from this aquifer. There are other groups that are working on solutions. Unfortunately, some of them come with price tags of 25 or $50 million or more. Efficient water technologies and water use reducing behaviors are the least expensive, the least invasive to the environment and can start today. Using less and being efficient with what you use always makes sense. Don't forget.